Hey guys, welcome. Today we're going to be starting a, a steel frame project for the ANET A6. So this frame will be designed to actually take all the parts off a of stock ANET A6 and put them onto this steel frame. So stay tuned. I contacted some guys that had designed a frame for the ANET A8. They offered to design a frame for the ANET A6 for a direct parts transfer. The rods are, are shorter on the ANET A6, and there's quite a few differences. This is probably going to be a multi-part series. This is part one, and uh, this involves um, showing you the frame on the uh, CAD software and cutting it out on my CNC plasma table. Uh, the second part will be assembling the frame and painting it probably. And then the third part will be taking all the parts off of this printer and putting them onto the steel frame. So let me show you guys uh, what the frame looks like. We'll go from there. I'm pretty excited about this and so is the designer. This is the Tatara A6 Steel RC01. It's the first steel frame designed for a direct a6 parts transfer over so you can have a steel frame on your anet a6 i collaborated with tatara he basically designed the frame he had an a8 or they because there's actually two guys they had a tatara a8 uh, steel frame and uh, i had mentioned to him that um in order to for me to put my anet a6 parts on I would need to buy longer rods, such as the rods on the ANET A8. And then he offered to design one for the ANET A6. So I was pretty grateful about that. And um, so this is the frame. And let me just spin it around. We got, uh, you can see it's a very strong frame. Look at this bottom, this bottom plate that holds everything square. I love that. Look at that. Okay, we got this uh, back brace here. This is made out of uh, three millimeter steel or one eighth inch steel. That's what it's designed for. So all the slots, all the slots on the uh, on the frame, as you can see in here, where my pointer is, all those slots are designed for three millimeter or one eighth of an inch. If you're going to have this laser cut, and you're going to use one eighth inch steel. You might have to grind a little bit, sand a little bit, right where these uh, these tabs are on this part where they insert into into you know this main frame here, uh, because the tolerances are pretty tight for one eighth inch. Um, I, I believe one eighth of an inch is three point one seven millimeters, and these are set for these slots are there's some tolerance built in, but I believe it's three point two millimeters. I'm plasma cutting mine on my plasma cutter, so um, the tolerances aren't quite as tight on a plasma cutter, and they, they seem to be fitting fine on you know when I make it on my plasma cutter. So this is pretty awesome. All these parts are are designed to take the A net A6 rods lead screws, motors, everything from a bone stock ANET A6 and just transfer it over to this. Pretty awesome. A few other things I wanted to point out. If you can see, if you have an ANET A6, you, can, you know how tight it is between the edge of this frame, the heat bed. So I had them widen that a little bit. This is going to be a very rigid frame, and it's going to be very useful for 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 speeding things up, you know, because uh, that's our limiting factor on these ANET A6s is the um, the frame, and it's not as bad as an A8. The frame is definitely more rigid than the ANET A8. But all this stuff is steel. Everything is steel. We want steel on the mainframe. Anything that's not a moving part, we definitely want steel on there. Because it's got some weight to it, for one, which helps to keep that inertia locked up in the frame rather than, than transferring through down through to the bottom of the, um, 
you know, to the, your countertop or your table or whatever. So you definitely want weight on the frame. So I'm basically making this out of scrap steel that I have laying around. And I had a piece of 1 8 inch uh, steel that's um, 20 inches tall by 27 inches wide. And that's what you're seeing here in the red. Okay. So all these parts that you see in here, I'm making out of 1 8 inch steel. Now there's, there's a few other parts and I, I don't have enough steel to make them out of 1 8 of an inch. So I'm going to make them out of 12 gauge, which is slightly smaller. It's uh, So this part right here, I'm making this out of 12 gauge, and I'm making these two back braces out of 12 gauge. It's not going to really affect the rigidity of it, and I'll tell you why. Because these are locked in together over here. You can see where this intersects this plate. They're all locked in together. There and over here. So that's all locked in together. See that where that bottom plate is? So these parts on mine, you don't have to do it this way, but on mine they're going to be 12 gauge. And 12 gauge measures 2.77 millimeters and 1 8 inch is 3.17 millimeters so we're not talking a lot of difference here um, under under a half a millimeter difference in thickness it'll be fine everything locks together you can see that so um, in the in the direction that it needs to be stiff it's going to be stiff and that's just for mine you guys don't have to do it that way that downdraft fan going. You can see no smoke at all in here. I got it blowing out the back garage door. Works great. for you guys 
how the, um, the downdraft works. So it sucks that smoke right down. Awesome. All right, that concludes the parts that are being made out of one eighth of an inch. Uh, next round is going to be some 12 gauge. Okay, so these are going to be the frame braces made from 12 gauge. Let's give this a shot. Check that out. I'm pretty happy with it. Looks like my tip is starting to wear out. But I think this will be good enough for what we're doing here. Pretty awesome. Slightly on the hot side. So these are all the parts. This is the main frame. The, uh, the upright. These are the two back braces. One here and one there. This is the bottom brace. It's a full frame which keeps this, which keeps this uh, printer nice and square. And let's see, we got some motor plate. We got a couple extras here because I was fine tuning my uh, CNC plasma cutter. So I got a couple extras there. These are some side plates for the motor mounts that go down here. front and back plate. This is the Y motor mount. These are the stops for the rods. They're metal. Um, over here you can see these are um, this is the tensioner for the uh, Y belt. I'm not sure what this is but we'll figure it out. These are the top plates that go up on here that, um, that mount the motor. Yeah, they go something like that. That mount the rods and the 
and a lead screw. And let's see. And that's about it. That's an overview of the parts. In the next video, we're going to assemble this stuff. We're going to clean it, paint it, and then in the third video, we're going to move all the parts over to it. So that's it for this part of the steel frame build. Uh, stay tuned for the, the next part. There's probably going to be two more parts. And also, I'm going to have some links in the description below. And those are going to be, uh, there's going to be some links for the steel frame, also the Facebook group for this particular steel frame. And uh, if there's interest in uh, having this steel frame cut, plasma cut, um, I'm gonna, I think I'm going to offer this for sale if there's interest in it. So if you're interested, leave that down in the comments below too. And uh, I haven't figured out pricing yet, but um, I don't know. Uh, we can talk about it in the comments if there's interest. I'll, uh, in the next couple of videos, I'll put a link where you guys can contact me directly. And um, we can talk about it there. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like. Subscribe and share it with your friends. Thank you.